I'm going to do my commemorative speech on China's one child policy. China's one child policy began in the late 1970s and early 18, 1980s by the central government of China. Population growth was a huge part in establishing this policy. This policy was has led to forced abortions, birth control, and to many bachelors left without a wife. Recently, in October 2015, China lifted this policy, and it has and it has been a big change. Controlling population growth in China was the main purpose to the one-child policy. To enforce the law, China found a way to fine couples for having another child without a permit. So you have to have a permit to have another child. With such a strong government, they were really able to do anything to make sure parents stayed within the guidelines of this policy. Couples who followed by this law were awarded with their certificate of honor for single child parents. To me, this just seems a little crazy that the government restricted you from having one child, and for only having one child, they awarded you by having a certificate. It seems more like a joke, but in China, it was very real. There were some expectation, exceptions to this rule. If the firstborn was handicapped, then you were allowed to have another child. Control and family planning came with the establishment of the People's Republic in 1949. Under the control of Chinese leader Mao Zedong, birth control was voluntary until a new leader came along. Ding, Deng Xiaoping came around after Zedong's death. Xiaoping began to think seriously about the rapid population growth, and then in 1978, a program arose encouraging families to have no more than two children, one preferably. This made contraceptives widely available. They were offered they were even offered financial incentives. The abortion rate in orphanage populations began to rise. There were billions of women to have who had to have abortions because of illegal pregnancies. Since two thousand there have been about seven million abortions per year according to China's health ministry. Because families had to choose between the male and female, most families obviously had to choose them out to carry on the family name. The change left men with no brides. There were so many men and not enough women to grow families. <clears throat> there are many people who were affected by the change because the change was a, the change it started on January 1st, 2016. So after January 1st, 2016, every baby born after then was now legal. Sun Mingmi, a resident of the country, found out that she was pregnant in August, but already had her daughter. So in order to keep her daughter that she currently had, she had to either pay a 20 a twenty, a two hundred thousand dollar fine, or have an abortion, and she chose to have an abortion. And shortly after, the policy came into effect. This meant that the baby that she was pregnant with that had an abortion was born, was meant to be born in, in um, sorry, was meant to be born <coughs> in the spring. So that meant that son's baby would have been legal and she would have been able to have both of her children but because that because the law wasn't changed before she had to have an abortion and so many other families in China have gone through the same same I guess devastating event <clears throat> an estimated about of 20 million children will be born in 2017 because of the lifted law. The higher birth rate is said to help China cope with the shrinking labor force and deeply integrate gender preference. We will have to wait at least 10 years to see the change in the gender gap, <clears throat> but for every 116 boys in 2015, it was 100 girls. So for every one, 116 boys to every 100 girls. This new law will also extend the time allowed for maternity leave, which currently stands at 14 weeks. Now that this law has come into effect, a lot of families want to have another baby. The only bad thing about having another child is because there was one, and the financial stability that you have will have to grow because you do have two children. And so some children in your family, you will have to choose what resources go to what child. <clears throat> in my cultural and, so my cultural and society... I don't think that the one-child policy would be morally and ethically possible. My family has many kids. My sister just had a baby, and it's not her only one. She has four others. So I don't see how it's acceptable. I know I only think this way because I haven't been in a situation where the, this policy has been intact. But just thinking about it makes me wonder how they even did it to begin with. <clears throat> there were many other families, like I said before, that went through that um regrettable abortion 
in 2015 because the policy came into effect in 2016. The things families had to do just to be able to have another child or even not to have one was too extreme in my opinion. I believe everyone, no matter what country you are, you should have the right to pick how many children you have. You shouldn't have to pay a fine. So I am very happy to know that the one-child policy is no longer in effect.